So I'm here in Southern Arizona at a place known as the Sarita Mine. And it's huge. It goes for miles and miles and miles in every direction. And to get an idea of the scale of these places, this place here is about a mile across on top with a lake in it and so big you can see it on a satellite map. And places like this extract materials like gold. We all know what we use that for, for electronics and, and luxury goods. But this place also is one of the largest copper and molybdenum mines in North America. And it's actually a complex of several mines that go on up into the mountains up there. While many of us don't feel very good about the environmental impact of mining, we also have to temper that with the uses for the materials that are mined. All of us every day benefit from these things. For instance, the electronic device you're watching me with right now has copper in it, has a small amount of gold and other precious materials. And without it, we don't have our televisions, our smartphones, our mini cameras. And as far as copper and things and materials to use in our everyday lives, the average house has 439 pounds of copper in it. The average gasoline powered car has between 18 and 49 pounds of copper. And the newer electric vehicles have as much as 143 pounds of copper in them. Things like large airplanes can contain as much as 9% copper and in some cases on larger ones that could be almost 10 thousand pounds of copper in one airplane. So the other day I came in here and got an opportunity to get above in the mountains above this to get an idea what the mining operations look like. This area is actually a complex of mines, um, one of them being called the Sarita Mine, but this mine complex operated by Freeport, constitutes several open pits and what originally started as some underground mining. And this is one of the largest copper producers in North America, and this mining complex is one of the largest in the world. To get the copper out of the ground, heavy equipment scrapes and digs away at the mountain using huge machinery, including conveyors, excavators, and trucks. Then, the raw rock containing copper ore is hauled away, and it's crushed using a gyratory cone crusher. After that, it's sent down to giant rolling ball mills like these to smash it down into a fine powder. Then, that powderized ore is sent onto a mill where it is mixed with water and acidic chemicals to create a liquid slurry. The slurry is then pumped into flotation tanks like these. Air is pumped into the tanks, causing bubbles to come up, and the hydrophobic copper minerals attach to those bubbles and float to the top, forming a concentrate containing high-grade copper. The froth containing the concentrated copper minerals is sent to a smelter where it's heated and the molten copper is then cast into forms called anodes. When we think of mining, we think of its toxic byproducts, its waste, its impact on the environment, and the funny colored lakes that are left behind in huge giant tailing ponds that often sit on top of these tailing mountains. If I walk over here, the shapes of these mountains are often very distinct. You'll see ridges, and those ridges are to keep the walls from collapsing entirely. So this one is terraced like you would see for agriculture in the Andes Mountains. And this mountain over here isn't. 
And what happens is erosion becomes a big player and these eventually collapse. The ones that are terraced usually have pools of water or uh, liquid tailings on top of them, so they don't want them to cave in. One of the things that these huge mines do is they consume enormous amounts of water. This particular mine complex uses 27,000 acre feet of water per year. And what that basically boils down to is 54 gallons of water per pound of copper. But by comparison, it takes 1,800 gallons of water to produce one pound of beef. So these are not efficient ways to get the things that we use in everyday modern life. But the reality is, it has to come from somewhere. So the next time you think about these huge operations, these huge mining operations, and the impact that they have on the environment from dust, from polluted water, from water consumption, to literal destruction of entire mountaintops, you also need to think about the fact that you're watching me right now on a device that's made from materials extracted from places like this all over the world. In the next segment, we travel to Ghana, Africa, to look at metals reclamation in the third world, where they extract metals like copper and gold from phones, computers, household appliances, and cars and trucks. It's not what you think.